everybody, welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Today we're back with our WWE Money in the Bank 2022 full show review and results. Now we did not get to the special videos that I wanted to do leading up to this pay-per-view due to a lot of different factors, but I'll give you guys my predictions as we go along, you know, how it unfolded. I'll be honest about it, I had a lot of things coming into this pay-per-view, but Money in the Bank is one of my favorite pay-per-views, you know, I love it, I absolutely adore it. I've always loved the concept, I was around for the first ever, thought it was brilliant then, have always thought it was brilliant, and it continues used to amaze me every single time. So I'm excited for it. I love the whole ideals around it. But I am going to be honest with you. I'm not really looking forward to the Money in the Bank matches for this show. This show's kind of lacking a lot to me, you know. But usually when that's the case, what do they always do? They always over deliver when we're not looking too forward to the show. That's usually the way things roll out. For whatever reason, that's how it goes. Nonetheless, man, we're going to dive into Money in the Bank 2022, letting you guys know exactly what took place, what my thoughts were on it, where I think we'll go from here. Fantasy book it maybe a little bit into the future, cover everything about the show that I enjoyed, I hated, and would this show be amazing, would it be terrible, or would it be somewhere in between? Let's find out together as we dive into Money in the Bank and find out what the hell took place. So our main show kicked off with the Women's Money in the Bank ladder match featuring Lacey Evans, Asuka, Alexa Bliss, Becky Lynch, Liv Morgan, Raquel Rodriguez, and Shotzi Blackheart. Now coming into this matchup, it had some good talent in there, you know, I wasn't really worried about the talent at hand, but as this match started to unfold, man, you could just tell how green and how uncontrolled and how uncoordinated everything looked, man. It, it had so much potential, but I felt like every move that they tried to make was just too slow or too uncoordinated. It looked very sloppy. It wasn't very crisp. Ladders didn't break. It was very untimely. I don't know, man. It just, it was so sloppy. It really was. It was just such a sloppy matchup is all I can really say about it. And that's really a bummer because the winner was who I picked and who I wanted to win this matchup. So Liv Morgan does capture the women's money in the bank, which is absolutely huge. I think that's a great pick. I think that's the right pick. Can't wait to see what they do with her right here. You know, a lot of us have been waiting on Liv Morgan to get a moment like this for a long time now. And to see this take place is just amazing, bro. It really, really is. I'm so happy for Liv Morgan. I'm excited for to, you know, to just to see what comes of it. But dude, it was super sloppy. It was very sloppy, but she does get her big moment right here. We'll have to see what comes of it. But she is Miss Money in the Bank, and I agree with this decision. Just wish the matchup was better. Next up was our United States Championship matchup between Austin Theory and Bobby Lee. Lashley, a matchup I really wasn't looking forward to. I'm not a huge fan of Theory. I think he's getting better and better. I think he has a ton of potential. I'm just not a personal fan of him. You know what I'm saying? I can acknowledge talent without being an actual fan of the person. That's how I feel about Theory. You know, I think they are going to plan on him being the next John Cena eventually. I said that, I think, like a few years ago or something like that. I claim that. And it seems to be coming to fruition. We'll have to see about that. But you wouldn't think about that looking at this matchup as we get into it. This matchup was a banger. It really was. You know, I'm not talking five-star classic or anything like that, but it was a fun little match. I'd say go back and check it out. It had a lot of near falls. It had a lot of reversals. Great chemistry between these two. I thought that uh, Bobby was really over with the crowd. You could tell the crowd really cared about Bobby Lashley and him being a babyface, which I think he works better as, I think. I think. I don't know for sure. I just think that you really want to root for him. You know, he moves around great. He's a great athlete. He had some great reversals and strength in this match. There was a, a botch or two, but it was just so good. I think the match was so good that it took, you know, it didn't really cost it that much much in the grand scheme, but Bobby Lashley reverses Austin Theory's move at the end of the matchup, lands on the locks in the hurt lock, and it was over. Bobby Lashley's the new United States champion. Did not see that coming whatsoever. Totally shocked the hell out of me, but man, what a what a turn of events. I, I thought it was a brilliant matchup. I had a lot of fun with it, and Bobby Lashley winning the matchup was great. I used to be a big fan of him when I was like 10, and it was exciting to see this take place right here and him get the quote-unquote upset victory over Theory and become champion yet again, the United States champion. I think it's a three-time U.S. champ now, which is amazing, but this matchup was slept on, and it over-delivered. Next up, guys, we have the Raw Women's Championship match between Bianca Belair and Carmella. Not a matchup I was really looking forward to. I just, you know, I'm not very entertained by Carmella. She kind of makes me sick. So, this matchup was what it was. It was kind of sloppy again. Wasn't really into it. Didn't really believe that Carmella was going to get the victory. Not Nothing too special about this match, honestly. I, I mean, it, it just really never got out of first gear for me. I, I wasn't into it whatsoever. Bianca Belair Belair does win, though, which is very good. I'm glad she won. That's the right winner. You know, no reason for Carmella to become champion right here, so I, I do agree with Bianca Belair winning the matchup here and putting Carmella away. I did like Carmella's gear, though. It was pretty sick with the money, you know. It was kind of an updated look at her last gear that she had, you know, a long time ago when she won Money in the Bank, so that was pretty cool, but yeah, just Bianca Belair was the right winner. This is the right deal to go. Nothing much more to it. Next up, guys, was the undisputed or unified tag team championship matchup between the Usos and the Street. Prophets, 
two of the best tag teams in the entire company, two of my favorite tag teams in the world. Going head to head, every time I see this, this Angelo Dawkins, it makes me sick. It's such a terrible figure, bro. What the hell is even that? Anyways, this figure sucks too. From the waist up, it's fine. Waist down, terrible. Anyway, this matchup was effing fantastic. You're looking at a match of the year candidate. One of the best tag team wrestling matches you're gonna see all year long, man. If you guys missed this matchup, you gotta go check it out. It was unbelievable. Great, just great chemistry. I mean, I didn't expect anything less just because of how good both teams are at what they do. Fun ass match, bro. Very, very fun. Very clean. Very just, just great near falls and great chemistry. Classic tag team wrestling at its finest right here. Had a ton of fun with it. I think you guys would really enjoy it, so definitely go back and check this one out. Great near falls, great athletic moves. Angelo putting on a show. Montez putting on a show. The Usos just showing why they do what they do. At the end of the matchup, Montez Ford does end up taking like a 3D looking move, which I don't know how I've never seen the Usos do that move for some reason, or it's been a while since I've seen them do that move. But Angelo Dawkins got taken out over the barricade, and they used that time to do the two-on-one there. But the gear that the Usos were wearing in this matchup was insane too. I hope that's like elite 105, 107 Usos, because you guys know we just got recently a J. We're getting a Jimmy that looks like J in Elite 95. We gotta get these figures in Elite 107 or 105 or something, because this was some badass gear with jackets and shirts and red sleeve and gray, red, white, black. It, it was very sick. Very, very sick. It even said Bloodline down the leg, so hopefully we'll get those as Elites. Hell, I think it'd be cool to see them as Ultimates. How sick ass would that be? Ultimate Usos in one series? I don't know, man. Come with both tag championships, cloth accessories. Could be a banger. Anyways, man, this matchup was fantastic. The Usos do retain, which I am fine with, but what a damn good football game. Next up was our SmackDown Women's Championship match between Ronda Rousey and Natalya. Now, this matchup right here, I did not give a goofy god dang about, man. This is one of those feuds that has been very cringeworthy. It's been channel changing. I love Ronda Rousey, but this return of her has made me, like, when she first came in, her first, you know, the first, her first go around in WWE back at WrestleMania 34 and shortly thereafter, all the way up to WrestleMania 35, I enjoyed so much of that that it made me just, just love her as a wrestler. I thought she was so damn good. And then, her coming back, I was so excited. And then, ever since she's come back, man, she has been a train wreck. It has been so bad. I just cannot get into her matches. I feel like she's not even really trying. And I feel like she may be completely done with after what just happened, Brad. This matchup, I caught the tail end of it because I was putting my son to sleep. Uh, not much going on there. You know, Ronda Rousey does retain, but then out of nowhere, Liv Morgan cashes in her money in the bank contract. Liv Morgan, who just shortly, a couple hours ago, or, or even just an hour ago, winning the women's money in the bank. She comes out, cashes in, and she has, uh, you know, she's trying to she beat up Ronda. Ronda reverses it into an ankle lock. Liv Morgan gets out of it, reverses that, roll up one, two, three. Liv Morgan is your new SmackDown women's champion. Unfreaking believable Unbelievable. Didn't see it coming, Brad. Did not see that coming. I feel like they always do this with the women, though. Like, they always use money in the bank to crown a new champion. They just say, yeah, don't. we're not holding this. I, I just got out of my mouth that I thought that, you know, I, I, I was I was excited to see where they'd go, but I didn't know if they, you know, you know, usually they put the strap or they put the bank, the money in the bank contract on somebody, and then they never pull the trigger or they pull that rug out from under them because they don't really have a plan. Well, here's their plan. They cashed it in immediately, and it was a nice reaction. I think a lot of people care about Liv Morgan. I think she's a natural baby face, and I think that this was a cool move, you know, even though we've seen it time and time again. I think it's awesome for her. Congratulations to her. Can't wait to see where it goes. She deserves this moment, and uh, I thought it was I thought it was pretty cool. I wish that the matchup with Ronda and Natalya was better and kind of set it up better for this, but at the same time, you know, it's a cool moment, and Liv Morgan's your new SmackDown Women's Champion, and I couldn't agree more with this move. And for our main event, the Men's Money in the Bank ladder match. We had Omos Sheamus, Matt Riddle, Drew McIntyre, Madcap Moss, Sami Zayn, Seth freaking Rollins, and Sheamus. Well, Brad, you thought before the matchup, Adam Pearce comes out, and he says that he is adding to this matchup. And who does he add, Brad? Could it be John Cena? Could it be a newly returned Bray Wyatt? Could it be Brock Lesnar? Hell, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. It's effing theory, bro. They put theory in the match, so of course immediately, you're gonna go, well, this guy's winning the match. But I was thinking to myself,
stuff? No. Right? They're not gonna just blatantly do this. I should have made another video on it. I, I guess I should do it again tomorrow or some other day this week because they have continued the streak of Money in the Bank winners that have been ruined. They have ruined the Mr. Money in the Bank like seven or eight years in a row now. And my god. This matchup started particularly slow. I did not like the pace of it. I thought it was very boring to start. It picked up a lot though throughout. It was a great matchup and it started building towards one. Uh, great moments picked up. I felt like Seth Rollins didn't get nearly enough stuff in. I felt like this man did a couple stomps. He did like one or two spots here and he was done with. The bit, the super RKO off the ladder by, by Riddle was really sweet. I just felt like he didn't get a nearly enough showtime and Theory didn't do a god dang thing in this matchup. Takes a super power bomb slam from Omos. He's out of the matchup. I thought it was cool to bury Omos with the ladders. I thought that was really unique and a really fun idea right there. I thought that was cool. He came back later on. It just, I don't know, man. I do, I don't know. This, uh, let's just get into the ending, shall we? Matt Riddle, you think he's about to win the Money in the Bank briefcase? Here comes Theory, who's been laid out for 25 minutes, I swear to God. He did, he took the big power bomb and he disappeared for a year and a half. A year and a half in match terms, you know what I'm saying? So it had been a, a long time. But anyways, he gets up there, they battle, they go back and forth. Eventually, Theory gets the upper hand, knocks Riddle off, and claims the Money in the Bank briefcase. Really shallow garbage stuff. You know, I don't, I, I just, I hate it, man. I hate it. I'm not a big, I'm not a big theory guy anyway. You guys heard it in the, earlier in the video. I don't really care for theory. I know they're trying to push him to the moon and it's apparent, you know. I guess that upset victory really doesn't look that too much of an upset now. They're like, he can take the L. He can hand the U.S. title to Bob because we're giving him the money in the bank contract, which is just, ah, uh, just makes me sick. God in heaven, man. Nonetheless, theory is Mr. Money in the Bank and I do not like it. I do not like it. I think overall, I think the thing about it is this, it was just so telegraph. You know what I mean? I think had maybe somebody got injured or something in the backstage area, like, oh my god, Sami Zayn can't compete. Similar to how Braun Strowman did it, and you know, they had to find a replacement or something like that, or or do something of that nature, I guess would have possibly been better, but I guess they were just like, F it, we're putting it right in your face, I guess, but I don't know, man. I'm just giving you my thoughts and opinions off the cuff. I know that they're booking theory in a great light. You know, it's not that he's not talented. That's not really what it is. It's not that he doesn't have a certain look. I'm just not a personal fan of the guy, and I wasn't a fan of how they how they pulled everything out right here. And I know he's supposed to be the heel guy. Yeah, like, I get it. I totally get it. I'm just giving you my thoughts and opinions, man. That's just the way it is. But that's Money in the Bank. I thought we had some slammer matches on this thing. We had some cool moments on this show. That tag team match was easily match of the night, I think. But yeah, that wraps up our Money in the Bank 2022 review, bro. Completely cashes it in there. Pun intended. Didn't even really mean to say that. That's kind of weird. Anyways, man, let's get into our random shout-out before we get out of here. This shout-out's gonna go to Jared Lowe or Jared EO. They can make 50 RVDs. That man has so much ring attire. In that category, he's only rivaled by Rey Mysterio. I still want that Elite 91 Chase variant. Yes, I do agree with that, man. Keep pumping out the RVDs. Just keep giving them to us. I don't care how many they make. I'm like you, bro. I just want a million. Give us an ultimate. That's what I really want to see there, but they have been pumping Rey Mysterio out crazy this year, man. There's so many Rays that we're getting this year, which isn't very shocking. The man, you know, he already had a ton of figures, and they're just adding to that list, man. But that is going to wrap up our shout-out. Huge shout-out to Jared, man. Thank you guys so very much for checking out the review. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below, and I do need to tease something before we get out of here. 